Vad har vi? 13 sekunder kvar. Nysnät. Och minns det som Andersson vågar knappt spela när Marke Bener sig där sätter press. Andersson gör mål! Rasmus Andersson gör 10-9 med 4 sekunder kvar! Porsche tecken ner kommer glidande på knä. Hi again everyone, back again with another video. I'd just like to have a look at this goal here as I think there's a couple of interesting things about it. So just to set the scene, right now the ball is with this black player here, the Dolan player. They're playing against Pixball, the white team. Dolan is attacking towards this net here, as you probably saw in the clip that just played through. So I'll move it through a little bit further so I can get into the analysis. Okay, so the ball is now with this player here. The pass has come out from the corner. And the first thing you'll note is that this player allows this white player here to close the gap, as it's called. They allow them to come closer and closer without retreating further and further so that the distance between that white player and the ball carrier gets shorter and shorter. What this does is puts the idea of winning the ball into the white player's mind and that allows the ball carrier to drag that white player with them when they move. So I'll take it through a little bit further and you'll see what I mean. So the idea of winning the ball from the ball carrier has lured this white player with the ball carrier and out of their probably correct position in the formation if there is such a thing and you can see that there's all this space in here that has been created by this player following the ball carrier up. And the reason that they have followed the ball carrier is because the ball carrier allowed the player to close that gap and get close before they started retreating. So the white player again has that idea that they could win the ball and potentially from this position, they might have a breakaway or something like that. The other thing to note is that if the shot was taken from this position, it would have to go through three layers of white player defense before it would get to the net. And even then, it still has to beat the goalie as well. So it's probably a good idea for the black team to move the ball to somewhere else before taking a shot so that they have a better chance of at least getting the shot through to the net. So moving along here, the ball is now with this player here and they're going to advance the ball and attempt to make use of the space that's been created. Now, the white player here actually does quite a good job of keeping the black player out of the middle area of the court. They basically deny access to the space that's being created horizontally. So this player cannot come into here. However, they are still too far behind the player to stop them advancing into the space that's being created vertically here. So that's what you see as the clip moves along. The player doesn't really get into the middle, but they are able to get closer to the white team's net before shooting. Just again, you can see the white player has done a good job of denying access to the central area here, but they still can't get there in time to stop the shot or to stop the player getting closer to the white team's net. Now, with regards to the shot, from here, this shot only really needs to beat one layer of white team defense and the goalie. It's really this player here from this angle. The shot pretty much comes through and ends up in the far side of the net here. Although it may look like these other players in front of the net are obstructing it, they're actually a little bit closer to the camera. So they're not actually obstructing the line of the shot that's taken. And don't get me wrong, this is a really good shot for this player to have their head up and to hit the right area of the net from there with only five seconds to go. So really quality play and obviously quite clutch execution from the black team. So that's all I really have to say. There's not too much in this one, but I think the most 
interesting point here is what this player here does. They essentially allow the white player to close the gap. And in a sense, they appear weak. They appear like they can lose the ball at any minute and they appear under pressure. Now they may actually be under pressure as this white player closes them down and this white player has quite a good reach. They're quite tall. So there probably was the threat of the ball being taken. And it is that appearance of being weak or vulnerable that lures that white player out of position. And that is ultimately what gives the shooter space to work with. So that was the main reason I chose this one to analyze because I think that there is utility in a player appearing like maybe they don't have full control of the ball or they're not in a favorable position. And they would do that in order to attract pressure. And in attracting that pressure, it's going to create space from wherever that pressuring player is coming from. So, so long as they know what they're going to do once that space is created and how the space is going to be exploited, I think there can be a lot of use for this type of tactic or this sort of psychological feint in many aspects of play, not just the attack in the offensive zone, but potentially in the, the build up and, and other areas as well. So I'd like to know what you think. Do you have any other examples of this? I haven't been able to find many on video. This is a good one. Please let me know if you have any other examples. Also, please, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see analyzed. If you have any specific goals or clips that you think are interesting, leave a comment below. But like always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. We have 13 seconds left. Ny stat. I miss it from Andersson. We can't play it. Mark Benes is there to set the press. Andersson gör mål! Rasmus Andersson gör 10-9 with 4 seconds left. Porsche tycker ner kommer glidande på knä.